We have with us on the sofa John Lydon, Lydon former frontman of the Sex Pistols, known to a generation as Johnny Rotten, a fierce critic of those in British politics and society. He was once called the biggest threat to our youth since Hitler. Now, though, he's been very laughing now, though, he's been voted <laughs> one of the greatest. <laughs> I was one of, wasn't it's a it? Politician. One of the people, it, was, it was a politician around the oh, time oh when they were all yeah. scared of what yeah, was going yeah, on with yeah, you. Yeah, they debated me in the Houses of Parliament. For being that was an the one under the traitors and treasons that. Indeed. You know, which that was hilarious. Right. hilarious. He carried the death penalty. Um, yes. That's uh, nice what a pop tune can do, isn't it? Well, it's extraordinary. <laughs> uh, John, we were just talking about schools then, the pressures on teachers. Yeah. And uh, I suggested, having read the book and, and read some of your experiences at school, very mixed bag for you, wasn't it? Because there yeah. were the, clearly there were problems at school, but then you found individual teachers in English, for example, in certain subjects that absolutely... Yeah, thrilled me. ...got you. And that, well, that's what teachers should do. They should inspire. But generally speaking, they're so like ill paid and run down and overworked that inspiration is the very last thing they have left for the kids. But and, that, and that's a sadness. It's, it's, it's to me, national health and, and, and schools should be two of the, the most highly paid jobs. These are, these are things we need as a nation. You know, if you don't look after, you know, you're ill and you're, and you're uneducated, then you are going to get a serious problem in the future. We hear some of that, some of your childhood, and what happened to you in your childhood in your book. But first, yeah, well, look at the serious problem I turned into well, through <laughs> neglect. <laughs> well, I was thinking more of, more of the fact that you were very ill when you were a child. Yeah. You had meningitis, yeah. which took you a few steps back initially, because you were reading at a very young age. Your mother had taught yeah. you to read at yeah, a very young age. Yeah, I could read right at four. And then that kind of, then you had a memory loss after being in a uh, coma. Nearly, nearly four years to fully recover who indeed I even was, or who my parents were. Um, but I'd lost uh, all coordination. I couldn't manipulate my body in any direction. And uh, couldn't speak, couldn't communicate. And that, that was um, extremely painful. Because uh, what would be coming out of my mouth would be just uh, babbling gibberish. Um, not much has changed, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this. There's some wonderful pictures in this book, and I, I want to draw attention to this one down the bottom. Can you see this one? Because this is this is uh, you, John, at the age of what's this? This is you about four, is it? And then six, six, six or seven. And this is a little later on when yeah. you had to wear glasses, and that was post meningitis, that's was it? After, yeah. Just afterwards, and yeah. then we're moving on to what? When you're fifteen. Oh, that's a cheeky chappy at fifteen with hair down to his behind. Because you're very... the one in the middle with the glasses. Yeah. See, this is uh, after meningitis. So I had to go back to school at eight, and I, I didn't even know my own name. So this picture of them, um, uh, they had to really prod me with, with with canes to get me to smile because that was a difficult thing for me to do. I noticed in quite a few of the photos in the book that you don't seem comfortable in front of a camera, even when you're having banned photos. Oh, I think I am. Yeah. It's what I'm uncomfortable with is sarcasm. <laughs> no, and a lot of journalists will be that way, and they'll put you on edge, and that makes you defensive, and you then automatically become quite bellicose. There but are not some today. Not well, yeah, today. No need today. There's some wonderful bits in the book where you talk. Some some people think they know the Sex Pistols story, and they think they know your story as well, yeah. or, or whatever. And some brilliant insights into your life and your family life. You talk yeah. about your mum and dad a lot. And uh, I, there was one sequence where you you first had your hair dyed, and you'd you'd gone green at that point. Yes, my dad said I looked like a Brussels sprout and kicked me out. He kicked you out of the house <laughs> at that point First in time. First time an Irish family has thrown a Brussels sprout out. <laughs> but, they, but they were hugely well, supportive. Well, that was between, that was, I had extremely long hair and I just said, you know, because he just kept on at me and I just went to the opposite extreme. But that would be me, you know, that's how I am. You had a lot of support. But that, that's way ahead of its time when I was doing things like that. There's also mention of a lot of support from your parents and you showing your mum yeah. your world and she was quite, although they perhaps didn't understand it completely, you took her to Yeah, but they had faith and, and trust in me. They, they knew I wouldn't be lying and they said there was always that inner dignity from them that I appreciated. You know, a man of extreme tastes. I, but the, there's the, no harm in me. One of the things that, that, that you, there are bits of the book where you effectively you, you just say what you think. There are passages where you you call it a monologue, don't you? Yeah. You talk about things you like, things you don't like. Yeah. And it's kind of intriguing. Can I give you a sort of yes, no, like, dislike? 
I don't know what you mean. Well, by I was going to go. So Beatles. It sounds like you're going to be talking to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, so the Beatles. The Beatles are a mixed bag to me. My mum and dad loved them, but uh, they played it to death, and so I had a natural rejection to it. I mean, there's some songs like Help. Uh, yeah, is it not Help to Skelter? There's, there's, there's some tunes in there that I do like. And how are you with the Queen these days in the royal family? I have no personal animosity against any one of them as human beings, but as an institution, it's something that I feel I have overspent on. One person I was very interested in your views on was Vivian Westwood, because she was paid quite oh, a part. Oh, that rancid old bag. <laughs> Well, I think your views well, are fairly running, clear. No, I'm really angry with her at the moment. She's running around claiming she like uh, came up with a title anarchy in the UK. I mean, what a nonsense. You know, go back and sell some frocks at Ascot. Well, well, this... don't, don't be piddling around in my world. This is quite I'm a... John. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. You this know? is quite a theme in the book. And that one ain't nothing to do with it. Because it's an interesting theme in the book because you also talk about the perceptions that people had of Malcolm McLaren yeah. as well. And many, well, if he was many alive think... today, he'd be saying much the same as her. You know, the same idiot nonsense. It's terrible to me. I was a young kid. And yet these adults were claiming to own me. Or, or that they've invented me, and, and that I won't ever tolerate. And they're still, to this day, like, inventing an agenda and writing themselves in a bigger part than they fully deserve. Have you mellowed out, do you think, John? Oh, not against oppression, no. Still there, is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm only 15, well, 58 years young. There's, there's another good 50 years left in me, I reckon. A lot of anger brewing. Very good to see you this morning. Great, Glad the anger's been... Well, anger's what made me recover. That, that's what got my memory back. That's why I, I used it as the title of the book, Anger is an Energy. The hospital advised my parents to keep me angry. That would spur the mind. I'm afraid and, our and time kick is up. And memories. John, our and time. our time is up. Our time, our time is up. Is I'm so up. sorry. John's book. We'll be back after these important messages. <laughs> not, not on this channel. Uh, John's book, <laughs> Anger is an Energy, My Life Uncensored, is out now. That's it from us this morning. That I'll be was back the with important John. message. That was. That was. That was the important message. I'll be back with John tomorrow from six. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. <laughs>